Now, I'm here in San Leandro, which is a, a relatively depressing uh, Bay Area suburb. Uh, though it is working class, it's not too fancy. I, I do appreciate that. But you can see they're still going for the uh, the failed uh, American nightmare at a lawn. Uh, regardless, uh, the freeway noise is also overwhelming. If I lived there for any sustained amount of time, I'd probably kill myself for being on pills. Regardless, I do want to point out the amazing job that these people are doing with these hylocerus, these dragon fruits, okay? This is a, a cactus, uh, epiphytic cactus species native uh, to Central and South America. I think mostly just Central America, actually, in Southern Mexico. There might be some populations in Northern South America. Regardless, they're doing a fantastic job, and you see a lot of people from Southeast Asia cultivate the shit out of these, and they do a really good job with them. I mean, you know, they look kind of like hell now. You can see it looks a little yellow and chlorotic. They're coming out of a cold winter, okay? You know, they're uh, not cold winter. It's cold for the Bay Area, you know, cold and prolonged. They, these do not, they like it, you know, warm and humid. They do not like, uh, they do not like this, you know, 40 degrees and wet. It's been more like 50 degrees and wet. But give it two months, these will be looking great. They're in full sun. They keep them irrigated. They're cacti, obviously, so they can close their stomata. They can take, even though they're adapted to humid uh, areas in southern Mexico and Nicaragua in Central America, they can close their stomates and they can uh, they can take the, the, the arid uh, humidity, the arid lack of humidity that we get here in the Bay Area come July, August, and September. Now, if you look over there, there's a massive one just dumping over the fence. These produce a fruit that's, in my opinion, a little bit overvalued. You know, they sell for like five bucks a fruit, but still delicious. And I just want to want to do this is this is like Italians in tomatoes. Okay, you go to like Chicago area, you see New Jersey or some, you see a lot of dagos growing tons of tomatoes. It's like this with the Hmong and the Vietnamese. Instead of tomatoes and basil, they're growing these hilo series, and they do a fucking fantastic job. They really do. Let's look over here at, the, at this plant. Now, see, you can. It's, it's obviously it's a it's a tri ribbed cactus hilo series, and I've seen it. The uh, you know when uh, southern Oaxaca, I've seen it in Chiapas. I've, I think it even grows in northern Oaxaca, right near the border of Pueblo. Once you get up uh, to more of the montane areas, uh, more of the the jungle like areas actually you know what it, i think it was at low elevation because i've seen it right near a pack of serious web rice spot regardless uh you know a lot of these uh a lot of the cacti in this clad the the epiphytic ones i think a canto serious might be in this clad too kick me in the balls if i'm wrong regardless uh they all exhibit the same traits they they are what you call scandent they're meant to like kind of grow up trees grow up rocks they need something to lean on you know, they can support themselves for maybe a foot or two off the ground, but uh, more than that, they need something to lean on. Their flowers are massive. Their flowers are absolutely massive. When they bloom, they bloom for one or two nights only. Uh, oftentimes they're white, pollinated by bats and moths. And then of course the fruit takes a couple months to mature and the fruit is about, the, it's massive. The size of a softball and, uh, and pink, at least with this with this species, with the, this Hylocerius species. And I'm not even sure what particular species is the most common one in cultivation. You can see down there what they're doing with the roots. Now the roots have mostly rotted because we're coming out of a winter, it's, it's mid-March. But the, what the roots will do is they will uh, adhere to that, to this, uh, whatever they're growing on, in this case that the uh, pressure treated two by four and they just kind of ra and that's how the cactus supports itself so the, it's it's odd because the root serves two functions here you know one of course is the uptake of water uh and humidity from the air but these are mostly getting their water since it's so dry here in the summer they're mostly getting their water from the ground but the roots also of course uh you know kind of like a tillandsia uh serve in ad adhering the plant to whatever it's growing on they serve the purpose of, of structural support and uh and keeping that cactus pressed. Oh, look, it's got new shoots. And it's a really nice thing to see because these, you know, I'm not sure what the surface of the, the undersurface of the root looks like, but it must have something because those roots are, can they can be hard to pry off of whatever they're growing on. Look at that, beautiful. You got the strap on here too. So nice. I mean, just a marvelous plant, you know? And again, adapted to the jungle, but because it's a cactus, it can close those stomata prevent itself from uh, transpiring too much moisture in the heat and uh look at it beautiful beautiful plant 
They got these nice trellis. I've seen some nice trellises in East Oakland. And, you know, some of the people growing them will get real crafty with it, too. You know, they got they got shit every which way. Different two-by-fours sticking out. You know, and then if in the nights when it does get a little cold, they probably just throw a sheet over them or something. I just said hi to the old guy growing here, you know, or living here. And, uh, yeah, he seemed really proud. He was pretty stoked someone was enjoying his uh, his work. Real nice.